So once I written the screenplay, the next thing for me was developing the concept art. And so I basically did a drawing and it wasn't a very complex drawing. It was basically stick figures, but it had enough of info to give the concept artist an idea of what kind of um, composition I'm looking for. Plus I had lots of tons of notes uh, to kind of describing the vision and had a um, lot of reference points uh, for the concept artist to, to take further. And I think it's important to do it that way. I think it's important to have enough of the vision so that the artist can understand it, but also have it open enough that the artist have a chance to bring their own creativity uh, to, to what your vision is. And so that's why I feel it's very important to have an artist that you trust because it's a process. You know, you give the artist the information and then they kind of give it, give you back some samples of the, of the art and then you kind of give more notes and it's kind of back and forth as you kind of solidify the vision while working with them in a collaborative medium. So once I gave my drawing to the concept artist, the artist came up with a black and white, just a test drawing to just kind of see the, the vision from different angles. After that, once sort of I decided on the angle that I was looking for, we mo moved on to colors and we tried different versions. You know, you're working with colors and textures and kind of figuring out the, C uh, the cosmic user interface. Uh, and that was sort of, it takes time. It, it took time because we had to come up with something nobody had ever seen in films before. So it wasn't going to be something really obvious. And we went through many, many, many designs. and. But then I think it was worth it because ultimately we were able to come up with a final design which captured what I had thought of in my mind uh, when I came up with the idea. But it also had ideas that the artist had brought in, brought into the vision. And it, it, it was just something when I saw it, I knew it was the right, uh, right art, the right design, right concept for what I really wanted to do. It wasn't just about the cosmic user interface because I also had characters and what age they're gonna be in, what kind of clothing they're gonna be wearing, uh, what kind of articles they would have on them, such as the flashlight. Flashlight was going to be an important thing in the film. They're gonna use it later in the story, so it had to be there in the concept art. Well, where they're located, so the location was important. They are in a forest. Uh, so that had to be in the concept art. So it's when I'm thinking about the concept art, it's not just one thing. I'm, I'm looking at it holistically to make sure it represents what the movie is going to ultimately feel like. I knew that Cosmic Light was going to have many different stages in the film. And I wasn't going to do concept art for every single stage. But I had to make sure that I captured all of the important stages because I knew it would help the actors when they're acting on the set, but also it would help the VFX artists later on in the post-production. So the first stage was cosmic light by itself. It was just a yellow light in front of the characters. The next important stage was when the characters point the flashlight towards the cosmic light and they realize that it changes color in the area where the light is hitting it. And as it spins on its axis, they could use a Morse code language to communicate with it. So that was an important point in the story and I had to make sure that it was captured accurately in the concept art. So after the characters communicate with the cosmic light using the flashlight and Morse code, the next thing was the cosmic light stops spinning on its axis and rings of light starts going up and down in the cosmic light. And so that was something going to be more of an animation. So I had drawn different stages of it, explaining the different brightness levels of each ring. The next major stage was when rays come out of cosmic light and they circle the characters from bottom to top. And the idea behind that was it's basically reading the characters. And when it gets to the top, it, it reads their mind and there's a turn in a light and then the rays go back to the cosmic light. The next main stage was when cosmic light, the entire cosmic user interface, splits into multiple rays, then they turn the color into yellow and then the rays travel all the way up to 
the character Dr. Davis and form a human shape in front of him. So there, it had to capture, the concept art had to capture these stages. So first it had to capture the splitting into rays and turning the color into yellow. And then it also had to capture the forming a human shape in front of the character. So the last drawing I did was of when the cosmic light, after it has formed the human shape, splits into the rays again, and then the rays travel up into the sky, and then they form a circle. The idea behind that circle was it was a circle of unity. I thought I was going to do a concept art for it, but then I just dropped that idea. I felt that the concept art we had created up until that point conveyed enough information. I just didn't need one more concept art for it. So I kind of dropped that idea. So overall, it was a long process. It was an iterative process, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed working with the concept artist. And I feel that's why it's important to collaborate with people that you can trust creatively because then you can have this back and forth of sharing of ideas. And it really helped the film because after that, every time anybody saw the concept art, they just understood what I was going for visually for the film. And I'm a very visual director and that's very, very important for me to make sure that I can communicate the, the vision that I have for the film to the people that I'm working with.